The new Canon EOS R putting it to the test. Hi, I'm Joel Grimes with the Joel Grimes Academy and one of Canon Explorer Lite photographers. And I got a chance to put the Canon EOS R full frame mirrorless camera to the test. I got it a day after uh, it was announced in Hawaii and I got a chance to take the model, a model out for one full day. And so I also got a chance to test it in a studio environment. So I'm going to show you 10 pictures that I uh, produced that I would could call, you know, my final images or final uh, group of images. So number one was Kanoe out on the beach and it took us a little bit to get started, get the camera, get the lights and all that. So I had one light overhead, a 24 inch beauty dish by Westcott with a Godox AD uh, 600. I was, the reason why I had that was I had to overpower the sun. So we're talking high noon. So I have a pretty simple approach to that. Number one, I go and I set my shutter speed to one eight thousandth of a second because I know I'm going to be about one point when I shoot a 1.2 or 1.4 lens. That's where I'm going to be. Then I go and I adjust my ISO accordingly to get the fine tuning of the exposure. So we had a Kanoe underneath a canopy of trees and then I had to expose for the background which is the beach, the blue sky and whatever the water. So very simple. It doesn't take much calculation. No light meters, no whatever. I just say this is I've been doing this long enough. I know 1 8 thousand, 1 1.2 and then ISO around 100, maybe 125th, maybe at the most ISO 200, somewhere around there. And I shot that with the one, the 50 1.2 lens. And I uh, discovered a couple things when I got that camera. Number one, it has face tracking with also within the face tracking, it has eye tracking. So when, if you've ever shot a super wide aperture lens, you know that it is so critical to get your focus on the leading eye toward the, the lens. In the past, what I've had to do is I take my 5D Mark uh, IV or my uh, 5D SR and I would magnify my uh, image on the back of my LCD on live view and then I would hit my back focus button which is how I focus and then I fire it and that's how I get what I would say a guarantee perfect focus on my eye but with this new camera all you do set it up boom take a picture it's that quick that easy now you have to have a certain distance from your subject to get both the focus tracking and of the face and the eye if you get too far back then it just goes fo the face tracking so there's a point in which if you're like, you know, way, way back and the head's really small in the frame, it's not going to show up. But by doing a portrait like what I did, the focus tracking with the eye tracking worked just like that. So then we took a Kanoe out or underneath a canopy of trees and with the ivy growing and really lush. And so there was no sunlight to overpower, though we had the ambient filtering around us. It was the, it was the 50 um, 1.2 lens, um, which performed absolutely stunning, beautiful work. So then toward the afternoon, we took Kanoe and I laid her down, we put her in a white dress, we laid her on the beach. I kind of wanted this shot. So I had two lenses that were the new R lenses. I had the 20, uh, a 4 to 105 f4 which I've got some samples I'll show you in a minute I had the 51 2 that was it then I had the adapter and I put my 7200 on and I literally put the camera at the lowest spot on my tripod just set it down in the sand flip the screen up in this case what I did was I had my LCD monitor on the back of the camera and I'm, I'm, I'm on my knees but I'm kind of squatted down but I'm not looking through the camera itself. I'm looking through the LCD monitor, monitor which is flipped up and I just tap right on her face and boom. Even with the older EF lenses, snap focus just like that. I did a number of those shots and then we had her stand up. I'll show you that picture. And so they're all shot at 2.8 which is the widest I can do with my 70 to 200 2.8 version 2 lens. Still an absolutely gorgeous lens, works perfectly with this new camera. Then we took Kanoe, um, the light was starting to change a little bit, and we put her on a, a rock with the kind of cliffs in the background, the ocean on one side, and I shot the 24 to 105 f4. Um, at about F9 ish, somewhere around there, eight, somewhere around there, we had kind of a portrait, more of an environmental portrait, and got some gorgeous light, and it worked out beautifully. So that was my last last light with her, and we had a great day. So that was putting the the R to the test in the field. Okay, so after that, we took 
Um, Cannon had me go to LA and we started out the uh, Orange County Learning Center. It's a beautiful facility. And we had an open kind of like a launch day with people came out. I had the uh, Canon uh, EOS uh, uh, R. We had a couple lenses. I had the EF adapters with some of the EF lenses. And we had some models come in. So here's Sylvia. Um, I took a, one of my backdrops, which is 60 inches by roughly 85 inches, that I print from a Canon printer. The big one, our big 60 inch printers, and I have it hooked to a X drop. Very simple. Uh, it's a, uh, the uh, Westcott X drop. Pop it right up, put my model in front of it, and we did um, one light overhead with the uh, 24 inch beauty dish with the a regular um, Canon uh, 600 EX RT uh, strobe. And then we had two edge lights on the side, the smaller little Westcott uh, uh, sort of like strip lights, and they became my edge lights. So all speed lights. And I think I had this one, I tested it out at uh, the 1.2 uh, aperture, so wide open, uh, the 51.2. In that scenario, I had to go to high speed sync because we got a lot of ambient light around me. And so the only way I can shoot at 1.2, even in a studio environment, is to go into high speed sync. So I don't know what that was at, probably around a one thousandth of a second, some, uh, something like that. And uh, got a gorgeous portrait of her that was just a good, good sort of first studio approach to that, that camera. We switched out a bunch of lenses. We had a lot of people there, so I didn't get a chance to shoot a lot, but we definitely put it to the test. And then I did a, another uh, setup here of uh, Sylvia where I took my 90 millimeter tilt shift lens. So I was showing people how simple it is to use a manual focus lens so that the tilt shifts are manual focus but with the new EOS R you have the, uh, the ability to still focus face track with eye track with the manual focus lens now it won't focus for you but it tracks the eye and then there's three little diamonds that when you focus so it's tracking the eye you focus until those diamond little points come together it turns green fire your lens. So very simply, I could just hold that camera and as my, my model st standing there, I just spin it, watch the little diamonds turn green, fire. And so I shot the tilt shift where I shot uh, the, uh, her face, the, her chest, and then her down below. And I stitched them all together to make one big final image. So that would give me about 75 to 80 megapixel capture, which is ultra high resolution. And again, that 90 tilt shift is a very sharp lens, so it, it just performed beautifully. So that's what that portrait I did of her there. So then that evening we did another event with, at the same uh, uh, Canon Learning Center, and we had Alicia, beautiful little model, and I did uh, some beautiful portraits of her, again using three edge lights, or two edge lights and an overhead light. And, and here I used the 24 to, 7, uh, 24 to 105 f4 lens. I'm going to show you, here's the overview of the, the image, and then I did, I'm going to show you a zoomed in, 100% zoom in on her face to show you how absolutely razor sharp that lens is. It's just stunning, the resolution. And then we did, believe it or not, I'm walking past the, uh, they had some catering there, and the guy behind the counter was this guy, um, Avery, with his 80s fro. This is the guy that was not a model, but that's just standing behind the counter, right? So I'm like, dude, I gotta photograph you. So he comes over, and I shoot him with his fro, and then you can see the zoomed in of him, uh, at 100% uh, resolution. Just absolutely stunning, gorgeous. Um, I'm just, my jaw hit the floor when I looked at these images. All right, from there we went to the Canon uh, Burbank Center, did a program there, and I grabbed one of the guys, uh, Asen, I believe I pronounced his name correctly. He was an actor, just there, photographer, filmmaker, whatever, and we did a uh, a really shallow depth of field portrait. I wanted to show everyone how easy it was to actually have the eye tracking and just literally fire off with a 1.2 aperture, really close portrait, and nail the eyeball. So I'm zooming in on him and you'll see the, the, his nose, everything's out of focus except just his eye and everything's out of focus behind him. So it's like literally that much depth of field.
and that focus tracking, eye tracking thing worked perfectly. So those are my 10 images that I have. I count sort of my, my select so far. So that's about a week and a half. And also, as a little side note, we are now filming this with the new Canon EOS R mirrorless camera doing the video with this. So it's kind of fun. We thought we'd just try it out and it's working beautifully. I'm actually shooting on my 35 1.4 EF lens with the adapter. So we'll do, we'll try to do a version of this with the new 51.2, just see what it looks like too. It'll be a little more compacted. But anyways, since we've been doing most of these with that lens, we thought we'd try it out. As a little side note, I wanna just give you one last little tip to throw in all this in and put it in perspective in terms of how I shoot. You notice that I've said I've shot on a tripod on every single one of these pictures. That is because optics are the same across the board and I do tons of um, lessons. In fact, on the Joel Grimes Academy, I think I have probably maybe two hours of just talking about optics. I love sharp lenses. I love getting the best performance out of my optics. And I've been doing this for years. And so when you shoot on a tripod and a good solid tripod, you have an end result is gonna be better. And when you go and pick your sweet spot of the lens, it's gonna even be uh, uh, the higher resolution. So you can't always shoot at F8 or F7.1 or whatever, but you wanna avoid F16 or F22 if you can. Can't always, but sometimes I do long exposures, I have to go to F16, F22. So Wyatt and I, we had lunch today, I talked a lot about optics. I just love talking about optics and getting people to get an understanding of how lenses work. Work. Just as a little side note that when you shoot on a stable trap platform, you're going to get a better end result. When people come to me and say, you know, how are your images so sharp? Well, that's why, one of the reasons why. So you start with good optics and then you keep it sharp by putting it on a stable platform. I can't always do that, but I try to do it every time I can. So there you have the proofs in the pudding. And if you have any comments, don't hesitate to send me an email and ask me questions and we will hopefully answer those. But don't also forget to go to the Joel Grimes Academy. I've got so many tutorials on there on how to be an artist, how to make a living, how to go and live your dream. So that's what I do for you is hopefully get you out in the field and doing what you love. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell. And then of course, you're always caught up with all my current content.